Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Andrew Young. I'm a computer scientist at Sandia National Laboratories. And today I'm going to talk about uh, container runtimes and give you a quick sort of overview or primer as to uh, what we're talking about with container runtimes. Uh, this is for the HPCW uh, workshop uh, in uh, June 2020. And this video was most certainly recorded many, many weeks in advance when Christian recorded it and not late night the night before. So FYI. With that, <laughs> let's get started. So obviously we got to cover some basics here and pretty quickly, but I'm hoping this will be reviewed for most anybody who would attend this workshop. So the obvious question is first, what is a container? And you know, my basic definition is it's a unit of software which packages up all the code and dependencies that are necessary to execute a single process or task or something, some single uh, com computational entity. It is, by name, uh, it encapsulates the entire software uh, ecosystem in which you're looking to uh, represent. Of course, this is minus the operating system kernel, uh, so containers may not contain quite the way you think. Uh, many people call this OS level virtualization. Uh, that being said, while I like this definition of OS virtualization, it is different than virtual machines and you shouldn't you know, start immediately thinking that a container is just a VM. That's, that's not quite correct either. Uh, instead, you can think of it as CH root on steroids or, or in relation to BSD jails if you're an old school Unix fanboy. Um, obviously containers, as, as implied earlier, are dependent on your host operating system, which is usually Linux. And uh, we're going to employ the user namespace, or excuse me, we're going to employ the Linux namespaces, including the user namespace, mount, PID. There, there's many here, and we'll get to we'll get to some of that in a minute. Um, if you've heard of Docker, you've probably heard about containers. Um, Docker is sort of the leading container runtime out of the gate. wasn't the first by any means, but it certainly took the the world and the uh, cloud world by storm. It's, it's used extensively within industry and sort of the enterprise marketplace and represents a lot of the foundational work for Kubernetes and some of the Google cloud efforts. Um, nowadays, I believe the most common place to find Docker is probably on Amazon AWS, which again, Christian, I'm sure will be able to tell you all about. So now that we understand what a container is, how does it relate to HPC? Um, and th that's actually a very good question. So. We've started to develop this vision that I think has taken place where the idea is we would like to support software development, testing, simple execution on actual laptops and workstations that our HPC developers have on hand. The idea here is we want to create these con working container builds that can be built on our computers here, you know, at home, for instance, especially with COVID, but then be able to deploy them on our supercomputer within our laboratory, university, or uh, other institution, or, or the cloud, of course. Um, and, and one of the major advantages is just to minimize the development time that we put forward, not only when using these supercomputers for simple development and testing, but also having to develop for a target environment can be rather uh, expensive from a programmability standpoint. So the, the more that we can ease our developer burden, the better off we will be. So with containers, the, develop, the developers can specify how to build their, not only their environment, but you know, their, their application as well. And this is a really important notion for some people that isn't historically the case within, uh, I would say, legacy HPC users. And it, with a container can just import this image and run it on the target platform. They could have multiple containers or many containers with different manifests, targeting different architectures, use different compilers, et cetera, et cetera. And the idea here is we're not bound by some vendor system software stack or begging and pleading for my local sysadmin team to install some new software for me. Uh, I can just build it in a container and run that container. Um, and I, I may be able to actually move my container across supercomputers even, which is an interesting thought, um, and not have to rebuild my code for each new platform that I wish to deploy. And what's really important is performance. Um, you know, really, when we talk about HPC, performance is paramount. So with containers, whatever we do in that space, we can't really lose performance. Um, and I'll, I'll get to this more in a minute. 
but this really matters for not only running traditional HPC, but also supporting some of our emerging workflows and workloads that we're seeing within um, more modern place HPC, including machine learning, deep neural nets, and uh, complex in situ uh, analytics workloads in combination with our traditional simulations. So with that, we have some features that we really want out of, a, out of containers and then um, some things that we really don't want or want to avoid at all costs um, whenever possible. So if we start looking at our features, uh, the first is sort of this BYOE or bring your own environment sort of idea here where, as I mentioned earlier, our developers can define the operating environment, the system libraries, and all the details in which their application builds and runs in and be able to bring it along with them. They have this notion of composability and portability with these container images that are really, really important. Um, and, they, and containers historically have integrated really well with modern development and deployment operations uh, or DevOps. And we wanna continue that sort of notion of um, working with version control systems and, and having you know, uh, Docker files managed and get and build manifest container images all built within um, their DevOps environment. There's some things, as I mentioned, that we want to avoid. Overhead being first and foremost. Now, overhead with any new um, level of abstraction, which you know containers certainly are, uh, may, may be unavoidable. However, we want to understand where that overhead exists and why and what we can do to minimize that. Containers historically are really good at running microservices, and this is often how they're deployed in industry. That doesn't really apply to HPC. Generally, we have one application uh, which will use the entire node, multiple processors, uh, rather than dividing up a node. In fact, in reality, we'll have one application that'll run on thousands of nodes. Um, so this sort of on-node par partitioning with C groups is unnecessary. This may be changing with some of the new analytics and in C2 workloads that we're seeing, but for now, you could just assume that you know we want a container to run on a on an entire node or many nodes rather than splitting them up. And we really can't have root level operation or uh, dealing with weird commodity networking that just doesn't apply with a complex high speed, low, low latency interconnect that I often find on supercomputing and HPC resources. So obviously we come to this question, you know, HPC and Docker, are these things going to blend? And some ways yes, some ways no. So historically Docker has not been a good fit for running HPC workloads. Um, on a supercomputing resource. There's security issues, as I mentioned. You know, we simply can't operate. Supercomputing is a shared resource environment almost always, and we can't be running as root for fundamentally obvious <laughs> reasons with shared file systems and, and, and the whole shebang. Uh, we, we can't really rely on daemons, and they're really not ideal for HPC. And Docker has been kind of cumbersome and lacked integration with other HPC tools, our schedulers, some of our shared file system details. And we really don't need some of the features along with it, including C groups and, and um, you know, TCP IP networking setup. Docker is useful, however, for building HPC container images. This includes just using Docker on my Mac or Windows or Linux. Um, and Docker files have become sort of the standard for building um, container images, even for HPC potentially nowadays. In reality, we're referring to sort of OCI or the Open Container Initiative and generating OCI compliant images and being able to import those to other runtimes. Um, so the idea here is I can build my container image with, it, with, with Docker, import to some other HPC container runtime, and then potentially run on thousands or millions of nodes. So I mentioned other HPC container runtimes. What do I mean by this? Well, good news. <laughs> there's a whole lot of them. Um, there's several different options that you can that you can pick and peruse through today. Um, some of these include Shifter, Singularity, Charlie Cloud, Inception, Soros, and and most recently, you know, utilization of Podman and even Builda. Um, you're going to hear a lot more about all of these runtimes, so I'm not going to cover any of them in detail uh, because that's really what the remainder of these talks are for. But I'm just gonna mention a bunch of these here so you have a quick little survey and understand that they all offer different designs and, and new mechanisms for um, containerization. They use different namespaces. 
they offer different security models or how you build images. They're implemented in different languages and they certainly have different command line interfaces along the way. So with that, I've gone and introduced Yakker, uh, my own container runtime, because I was feeling a little left out that I didn't have my own. So uh, I have a yet another container runtime. I've written it in Go, and it's only 66 lines of code. Wow, how cool am I? Here's actually all 66 lines of code. And you can see this does the necessary uh, execution of cloning my uh, various namespaces, setting up a new PID, um, you know, setting my, my uh, you know, host name inside of a container, making the ch root operation, changing um, and, and doing the pivot root, all that fun stuff and managing managing that. And hey, isn't that great for me? Well, I'm, I'm really kidding. I did not write yet another container runtime and I don't recommend you, you do the same. Uh, what I am referencing is uh, Liz Rice's container from scratch talk. It is excellent. And right there, I have a link to that YouTube video where she gives a wonderful presentation um, to sort of demystifying the magic behind containers, um, as, as well as the code, which you can find directly on her GitHub page. She also has a uh, very interesting book, How to Containerize Your Go Code, which I would recommend. So um, I say this really tongue in cheek, but obviously it's, it's, uh, it's worth pointing out that containers aren't magic. We're using uh, some really cool tricks and features within the Linux uh, operating system uh, to really sort of isolate processes. And, and that's really what it's all about. So, all right, I've talked about this, you know, diversity here, or talked around it and, you know, made fun of it to some extent, but there's an important point that containers aren't magic and <laughs> maybe they're just boxes, but um, container runtimes are really fundamental to a lot of what we're deploying in terms of new code within HPC. Um, and this diversity that we see that I potentially poke fun at is actually a really, really good thing and sign of a, a very healthy and vibrant community, which you're going to hear all about over the next couple of days. Um, you're going to see multiple different features, which we can use to compare and contrast against, uh, you know, different implementations, how they're implemented, variants along the way. Um, and, and this is a really powerful notion, not only for producing a, you know, production container runtimes, but also for really moving, you know, the bar forward with uh, operating systems and system software uh, research and development op opportunities. This is a fundamental, a fundamental uh, necessity to have these various container runtimes to spur innovation. So with that, I generally take the aspect of trying to propose you know, that we focus on interoperability where it makes sense um, and, and really sort of, you know, leverage what we can from one another while also being able to have a situation where we can have individual contributors focus on the innovation at hand. And what, what more can we do with container runtimes, as I think a lot of these future talks will allude to. Um, we, we, this innovation is fundamental for, um, you know, containers and HPC and really potentially the future of supercomputing as a whole. And uh, obviously with that, there opens this big question about, are we gonna see containers in exascale? And I certainly hope the answer is yes. So with that, I will quickly conclude and just say thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, I will answer them at the end of this uh, runtime series. And hopefully we can have a bit of a discussion about the various container runtimes at hand. Thank you very much.